hard-hitting, adrenaline-laced Major League Lacrosse action is back. Your Ohio machine is oiled up and ready to rock the competition the only way they know how. Through blood, sweat, and gears. Get your tickets now to watch the best lacrosse players in the world dominate the field at Selby Stadium in Delaware, just north of Columbus, all summer On the web at theohiomachine.com. We partner with organizations to leverage technology to accelerate their growth and profitability. Associates has really partnered with us to learn our business, understand our needs. Since they've sat on both sides of the desk, not only as implementation experts, but also people who actually use the accounting system they were able to build solutions that really helped my staff. The breadth of knowledge that Socius delivers in multiple areas of the business um, have just been has been remarkable. We're Socius. Get to know us and what we can do for you. Welcome to episode six of the Nuts and Bolts podcast presented by Socius. I'm your host today, Brian Bender, and taking time to sit with us is the one and only Machine Game Day field announcer, Mr. Mike Todd. Mike, how are you doing today? Great. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time. It's a busy schedule for you out there on a game day. Uh, it absolutely is. You know, you, we, we like to get here a little bit early and and uh, myself, Dave Brewer, and Noah Sharfman, you know, we'll go over the scripts and things of that nature and kind of map out what we want to do as far as contests go and make sure that uh, all of the fans have a positive experience when they're here to watch the machine play. Now, you're going into your third year doing this for the machine. What's the biggest difference on the field that you see this year? Well, I, I tell you what, you see a lot of talent out there now. And not that we didn't have talent before. We obviously did. Um, but to see a few fresh faces, you know, guys like a Peter Baum and, and like a Kyle Harrison, um, and, and you really see a, a unit that's cohesive, or at least getting to that point now after, well, I think we've played five games now. Um, you know, and, and especially with the big win last, uh, with, you know, within the last week or so, um, you really get to see these guys meshing together as a team. Now, when I watch the game at home, I watch the home games in the press box. And just doing the Twitter and everything like that, it's really hard for me to kind of keep pace with everything from the press box. On the field, it has to be even harder for you. Well, I, I tell you what, it, what, what makes it uh, a smoother transition for us is that we're so well prepared and that we have so many great people. Um, not only, I guess you'd say, uh, paid staff, but also all of the great volunteers, um, you know, people who are interns. Um, you know, they, it, it just, it, it can be daunting, um, but the thing is, it's less daunting because we have so many good people out there helping us on the field with everything that we do. What's your favorite game day contest? Oh, my goodness. Um, I really like the Dizzy Stick. That's a, good one. <laughs> that's, that's, a, a, that's a really fun. Um, uh, the other one I like is um, the, the Dress Like a Player. That's really fun. Um, anything that the kids are doing, you know, it's it's such a thrill for them to be out there on a major league lacrosse field, um, competing in whatever they're doing, and they're just happy to be out there. So you, you kind of live vicariously through them and all the fun that they're having out on the field. How long have you been in Columbus doing various game day activities? Because you're with the Blue Jackets as well. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, I've been uh, living in Columbus, oh boy, I'm going to say for about the past... Uh, 20, this is my, my, probably my 22nd year in central Ohio. Um, went to Ohio University, um, and my wife and I um, moved. She's originally from Columbus. I'm from a small town um, in Harrison County, uh, Piedmont, Ohio. Um, but I've been in, in central Ohio for 22 years, and it's just been it's an amazing experience, you know, not only doing the Columbus Blue Jackets, which, which is a unique animal. Um, I've done the Columbus Destroyers, which was an arena football team. Um, so it, it's just it's just a real thrill to be uh, a small part of Central Ohio sports. Now, last well, last time I did the podcast, which was episode four, and I forgot the name of the team we were playing. At the end, I wrapped that up, and everyone got to sit in there and laugh and make fun of me while that was going on. It was it was it was epic. It was great. But um, we were talking with Coach Marzano, who is also the head coach at Wilmington Lacrosse, and you have a connection to Wilmington Lacrosse as well. Yeah, I do. Um, my son Garrick uh, will be a junior uh, this upcoming season, um, and yeah, he uh, he plays for Coach Marzano. And uh, I tell you what, Coach Marzano and uh, Alan Rill are, are doing a tremendous job there 
at building the foundation for a great tradition of lacrosse at Wilmington. Uh, this was their second season, uh, so they got a few more guys on the roster. And I know that Dom's got a great recruiting class coming in this next year. Um, but it's it's very rewarding as a sports fan and, and for me, more importantly, as a parent to see the great job that they're doing down at Wilmington, the support that they have through the athletic department. Um, you know, you're just you're so excited to see what the future holds uh, for Wilmington men's lacrosse. Coach Marzano is a really, you know, he's an energetic guy. He knows what he's talking about. What was the biggest difference year one to year three? I would say the biggest difference um, year one um, till now is I think just getting more people in there. Um, I think seeing uh, a little bit more consistency uh, from certain positions. Uh, and I think the, the fact that these guys have another year under their belt, um, whether it be on the offense uh, or the defense or whatnot, um, I think you're just seeing um, the, the team starting to gel. You know, it's kind of similar to what the machine is doing right now, you know, where they're, you know, where Wilmington is entering into their third season and the machine, you know, playing their third season, you know, I think you begin to see things starting to click for certain guys, um, and you know, uh, you know, with 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 the machine, I think you're going to see more immediate results uh, with Wilmington. You know, they're still going through their growing pains, um, and that's going to happen with any new program. So, uh, but, you know, I, I just think that it's, um, and, and, you know, you ask any parent of a Wilmington men's lacrosse player, they're going to tell you the same thing, is that, you know, you're encouraged by what you see, the progress, um, and you're encouraged by what the future holds for them. Well, a lot of people in the Columbus area have Twitter, and they follow you on Twitter, and you have a very unique an interesting story behind your Twitter handle, so why don't we go ahead and talk about that? Okay, uh, my Twitter handle is at Otto Buzzkill, O T T O Buzzkill. And how that came about was um, uh, working for the Blue Jackets. Um, if we win a game, I will interview um, a player. And I'm, you know, no sports journalist by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a real quick question, and, you know, and they answer, and it gets, it gets the crowd pumped up. Well, uh, a sports writer put in the paper that listening to one of my post-game interviews was an automatic buzz kill. And I was like, ouch, okay. Um, but then I thought, well, number one, what a great name for a heavy metal band. I could just, you know, automatic buzz kill. Uh, uh, and but I said, you know what? That's a cool. That's a cool Twitter handle. So uh, so that's where that came from, and it stuck. It stuck for a while. It's a pretty good Twitter handle, if I have to say, as far as the creativity department goes, because some of them are pretty like bland with last name number here. Maybe mine. I don't know. <laughs> so as far as when you're on the game, what's your favorite part when you're down in the field, looking up into the crowd, or down on the ice? What's your favorite part about that interaction with the fans? Because it's a unique interaction. Uh, you know, it is a unique interaction, and I think what um, what lacrosse fans and hockey fans have in common is their enthusiasm for the sport, uh, the way they follow it. Um, you know, I think that's one of the most rewarding things. Um, it's nice to see families there um, uh, at a sporting events. It, it's nice to see parents there with their kids. You know, their kids are excited about the game. Um, you know, with hockey, I'm excited to see, like, the young people who go out and play, um, play games in between periods. And, and here, you know, it's nice to see that the kids come to the game and kind of like when you when you bring your ball glove to a baseball game, it's cool to see the kids who come to the Ohio Machine Games, and they've all got their little cross sticks in their hand. Um, you know, even though they're not playing the game, they've still got that stick in their hand. And I hear so many lacrosse parents and lacrosse coaches. You know, that's one of the big that's one of the big things they say to young people is keep that stick in your hand. Um, so I would just say it's it's the general. Um, shared experience of being able to be at a sporting event where everyone's enjoying themselves. Yes, you're there for the for the athletic competition specifically, but it's also nice that people are here. Um, you know that they're coming out socially. You know they're coming out because you know they took time out of their day, spending their hard-earned money to come and enjoy a sporting event like watching the Ohio Machine play. And speaking of the machine, especially this year, as we were talking about earlier, with lots of younger players coming in through the draft, and especially high draft picks like Peter Baum, a Marcus Holman, and a Tom Schreiber, what do you see for them in the future as they continue to gel with this older team, not so much older in age, but the team that has been here before? Well, I think that's how you know that's how you build a successful uh, sports team, you know. And I don't care, you know, what uh, what team you have, you know, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, lacrosse. Uh, you build through youth, 
You know, that, that's how you're going to build a consistently successful team is that you have young players out there who can help develop a tradition of winning and a tradition of success. But I think you also need to have that, um, that sprinkling of, of veteran leadership, you know, guys who have been there before, coaches who have been there before, um, so that you have that right mixture and you get a successful result. All right, Mike, one last thing before we get you out of here, because you have a pretty big job to do tonight. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's a big one. Um, when you read Otto Buzzkill's Twitter bio, the first thing that pops up there is Dairy Queen owner. So I can't let you get out of here without you telling everybody what your favorite blizzard is. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, Dairy Queen. I have, I have two Dairy Queens in central Ohio. Um, and my favorite blizzard, uh, I tell you what, my standby is the Reese Cup. I, I tell you what, I can, and I, and I may do a little variation of that. I may put you know, some Reese cups in there, and I may put a little extra peanut butter or some chocolate uh, fudge or whatnot, but I tell you what, the, the Reese cup is, is my go-to blizzard every time. I'm going to have to agree with you there. Mike, thanks a lot for taking the time and coming into the Nuts and Bolts podcast presented by Socius. I'm Brian Bender, and we will see you next time. We check athletes from head to toe before the season starts to make sure you don't hit the wall when it matters most. Teaming up with coaches, athletic trainers, and physicians to keep athletes healthy. Helping you avoid injury and recover quickly to keep you in the game. OSU Sports Medicine. The official sports medicine provider of the Ohio Machine and athletes everywhere.